Good afternoon, my name is Lieutenant Rick Hopkins from the Vermont State Police, uh, Rockingham. Today we're going to provide you with a press briefing on a series of related burglaries and other crimes that have spanned about 12 months that have affected communities in five states. These crimes have not only affected the businesses that were the victims, but have caused entire communities to be concerned about safety and security. The vast majority of these burglaries have occurred in Vermont and New Hampshire, primarily the southern portions of those states. Shortly you're going to hear from some law enforcement officials involved in this case. The investigation is involved and far-reaching, so, so much so that the burglary investigations are still in progress and continue to be linked, uh, crimes continue to be linked uh, to this series of crimes every week. We'd like to give you a definitive number of crimes, but it's not possible at this time. We can say with confidence that over 100 burglaries are involved in the larger joint investigation. These crimes were resolved through cooperative efforts of many local, county, and state law enforcement officers. With, while the scale of cooperation is noteworthy, the concept is not uh, unusual. Cooperation between patrol officers, deputy sheriffs, and state troopers is the rule in rural law enforcement, not the exception. Uh, right now, Deputy States, I'm sorry, Wyndham County Deputy State's Attorney Stephen Brown is going to speak to you about this investigation. Thank you, Lieutenant. In the late summer of 2011, law enforcement officials in the Wyndham County region began to notice a pattern of similar burglaries along the Connecticut River Valley. In October, 2000, uh, in October of 2011, at the direction of the Wyndham County State's Attorney, I moved to organize, uh, I moved to organize an information sharing meeting regarding these burglaries between the various law enforcement agencies. The working group of investigators began working together on these burglaries, sharing information, intelligence, on MO, time and day, and other factors. In October 2000, uh, of 2011, some critical informa information was developed during the investigation of a burglary in Cheshire County, New Hampshire, that led investigators to understand these burglaries span the river into the state of New Hampshire. The group of cooperating investigators grew to include over 14 law enforcement officers, dozens of law enforcement officials, including local, county, and state investigators, and prosecutors from both New Hampshire and the state of Vermont. Information sharing meetings continued involving investigators from both states. The larger group developed a comprehensive picture of these crimes that allowed investigators to narrow the investigation to a group of suspects. Because of the cooperation, evidence was compiled linking several suspects to approximately 100 burglaries in Vermont, in New Hampshire, as well as several in Massachusetts, one in Maine, and one in the state of Virginia. And I'll hand it over to uh, Drew Brodus. Good afternoon. My name is Steve Otis. I'm a senior trooper with the Rockingham Barracks, and I was tasked by Lieutenant Hopkins to be part of this uh, jurisdictional group back that met in uh, October 2011. Based on that investigation and the cooperative effort of all people in this room, uh, evidence was developed which established uh, the solving of 30 burglaries in my area alone. Those 30 burglaries entailed uh, many different facets that obviously are still under investigation and can't be part of this uh, waste of information but certainly have resulted in the arrest of four individuals on the wall behind me, including Chris Ruggiero, Lance Thomas, Chris Goldschmidt, and Travis Noyes. Two other male subjects who are currently incarcerated in New Hampshire on related charges are Dylan Lang and Cody Lowy, and currently one other subject that is still at large that we're trying to locate a Logan Critchfield. I'll turn this over to any other agencies that like to speak about their investigations. Good afternoon. My name is Detective Sergeant Joe DeRusso with the New Hampshire State Police. It's amazing with these cases, the collaborative effort between all the agencies and the way the intelligence was shared. Uh, New Hampshire has arrested three of the suspects already. I won't be able to speak about the open cases, uh, but we do anticipate there'll be indictments and more arrests coming in the upcoming months. Uh, back in October of 2011, the case really went full speed after uh, troopers from Troop C. Uh, Trooper Gillis to my right was one of them working. I uh, received a call from the Summit Steakhouse in Westmoreland that there was a burglary in progress. They were able, able to respond up there, complete an investigation, <clears throat> and they took Lance Thomas and Christopher Goldsmith into custody with that case. Uh, more information, intelligence was shared, and the investigation continued. There are approximately 30 burglaries in New Hampshire that have been solved from this. Almost all of them are commercial in nature. As a result, just recently, uh, Dylan Lang was arrested in Keene 
in charge with a burglary of the Summit Steakhouse on a second time. That, that burglary occurred also in October. Most of the other uh, burglaries involved, the people are behind me on the board, and unfortunately I can't speak of those in detail because they are open investigations. Uh, but we've been in touch with both the Treasure County Attorney's Office and the Sullivan County Attorney's Office, and we anticipate indictments and arrests forthcoming. Any other agencies? Okay, that's all we have for uh, prepared comments today. If uh, there are any questions for individual agencies. Hi, I'm Susan Small here from the Rutland Herald. Um, you, you describe it as a, a ring or a spree. How was it, how were they all interconnected? Was there a mastermind of this, of this? how planned was it? Um, a lot of these details are still not known to all of us. Um, we're still investigating. However, uh, you know, there, there's a group of related people that seem to be involved in each of these. Tim Johnson, WTSA in Brattleboro. Were weapons involved among the stolen items in any of the uh, burglaries? Uh, I will defer to Rose, but I believe there were a couple of guns stolen. There were a couple of weapons stolen in some related burglaries, not in the 30 of which I covered. New Hampshire, there were some weapons stolen. Adam Solomon, WCX. Um, is it, I guess it goes back to the question about what connects these crimes together. I know you can't talk too much about the investigation, but the gentleman said they're commercial in nature. Does that mean all of them are commercial in nature? They're all targeting cash? Like, the, can you just go into a little more detail on what, what leads you to believe they're all connected? A good question, yes. Um, what really brought us uh, all together was were those connections, that they were all typically uh, commercial or industrial places. They were, um, there were similar types of things stolen, similar times of day, uh, and things of this nature, and eventually similar people involved. So yes, that, that is how they, um, initially that was some of the information that brought us all together. And just quick follow up, the, these gentlemen who have been arrested, are, are they friends, are they relatives? What, what's the connection between the actual uh, suspects? I, I don't believe uh, any are related, they're just friends or okay. acquaintances. But you believe that they all know each other and were acting together? Yes, uh, whether each individual knew each other, I don't know, but certainly every individual here had links to other individuals here, if that answers your question. Uh, I think you were here, then we'll go up back here. Uh, Casey Farrar from the King Sentinel. I was wondering about the connection to, it said there's one uh, incident in Virginia, and what is that and how is that related? Uh, basically, they came under some pressure locally that there was some information developing that Law enforcement was coming to a closure on identifying suspects in these burglaries, and they decided to take a bus out of town, basically, and ended up in Virginia. Hi, Jack Thurston from New England Cable News. Uh, I'm curious what you can tell us about uh, Mr. Critchfield. Uh, where would you like folks to keep their eyes out for him? Do you have a vehicle he might be in, a license plate, anything that might help, help you folks apprehend him? We don't have a vehicle or a license plate at this time. Uh, we do believe that he would likely be somewhere in this region. Um, so I don't think he's traveled far out of this region. Uh, we don't have any information, but he's traveled far out of the region. Dr. Tim? Any link between these incidents and drug activity in the region? Uh, I'm not prepared to speak to that at this point. Jim Cole with the AC out of New Hampshire. Are they all Vermont residents or New Hampshire residents? Uh, you will get a handout that will give you their last known addresses, I believe. Five Vermont and one New Hampshire. And you will get that in your handout. All right, great, thanks. What do you hope the maybe overall message is around uh, vigilance? Uh, because you said that there are others that uh, might possibly be linked to these. Uh, this kind of crime seems to have been on the uptick in recent months. Any, uh, any property safety messages that you could put out there on this? Uh, certainly, um, in, in these cases, um, you know, people can benefit from putting out security lights, um, you know, checking their, the security of their buildings, making sure that, um, uh, you know, their doors and windows are secured and, and there are no easy access points for people, uh, certainly reviewing their security policies and uh, uh, alarms if they have them. And if they have questions, I would definitely direct them to their local law enforcement official for, you know, further, uh, more specific advice.
I think we had something. Yeah, you mentioned the majority, which I think are commercial, but were some homes targeted as well? I believe there were a few homes, but generally they were all commercial. And with the guns stolen, were they, were they, was, it a, was it a commercial gun shop, or there happened to be weapons inside the commercial store? I'm not aware of any uh, gun stores that were, were targeted. These came from other locations. Not retailers. A follow-up for Simon DeRusso. You mentioned um, Dylan Lang was arrested for the Summit Steakhouse um, burglary. And was, that, was it burglarized twice then? Yes, it was burglarized twice. There are several locations in New Hampshire that... Would you mind stepping into the mic, please? Thank you. There were several locations in New Hampshire that were actually burglarized twice, in some cases by the same suspect, in other cases by other members that are listed on the board. Is Federal Bureau of Tobacco and Firearms involved? Well, because there are guns? Or? No, no, they're not. And can, can you just, any one of you gentlemen, can you, or ladies, can you uh, speak? To the um, just the collaboration, uh, the effort between the agencies. Obviously, this takes added resources, cross state lines, that, that sort of thing. Yeah, I'd be happy to talk on that, and I hope uh, my contemporaries will uh, jump in. Uh, the cooperation between agencies, again, as I said earlier, is nothing new. Um, uh, all the years that I've been a trooper, that's the way uh, rural law enforcement works. Uh, there's not any one agency that has enough resources or enough people to solve every problem. Uh, so that happens all the time. It's been happening for years. Uh, in this case, it certainly was very helpful because a lot of resources needed to be dedicated to this uh, investigation just because of the scope. It takes a lot of man hours to do uh, all these interviews, to uh, you know, follow up on evidence and, and things of this nature. And uh, by spreading the work out amongst all these partners, it uh, was critical in, uh, th that was critical in our success. Any similar motive for all of these uh, burglaries? And if so, what would it be? You know, I, I think money or, you know, some sort of uh, economic gain is, is the only motive. Did anybody else want to speak on the cooperation piece? I, would, I, would I like think it's kind of key. The teamwork and cooperation on this case, half of these arrests probably may never come to fruition. I can't speak enough about everybody that was involved. There were emails being sent on a daily basis. When people said they were going to do something, they did it. Or if they said they were going to hold off on doing something, they did it. I was really amazed in the years I've been in law enforcement. There's always great teamwork, but this was just an exemplary example of, of how teamwork came together and ultimately helped all the victims in these cases in both Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, and Virginia. Was there one person who was the ringleader, and was it based in any particular town? Or? That, that's the information that where there are open cases really you can't discuss that. Um, can, can you talk about a, a cash total? All you said there were about 100. Um, do we know how much cash we're talking about? Oh. No, unfortunately, um, this is, although we're, we're happy to bring this information forward, and it seems like, uh, how can you say after a year it's early in the investigation, but we really are in the early stages. Um, to give you some ideas that as we developed information, this group, um, this group continued to expand uh, into other counties and other areas. So those folks are still investigating um, how these crimes are linked to their existing crimes that they've already investigated. So uh, just, we haven't had the time to drill down that deeply and, and figure out uh, an economic uh, impact. And do you believe that there could be more than 100? Yes, I, I believe, but I, I can't you know, give you a, a, I really just can't give you a number at this point. When were they arrested? Uh, Friday, the, the four gentlemen that we uh, list as arrested in Vermont were all arrested on Friday. The two that were arrested in New Hampshire, I don't have a date. As I indicated, the, uh, the initial Summit Steakhouse burglary was uh, October 26th. The arrests were made that night. Uh, just recently, within the last week, Mr. Lang was arrested for the other Summit Steakhouse burglary. Uh, but both of the incidents actually took place in October. All arrests without incident? Correct. Yes. Cody Lowy has been incarcerated since January 4th from Charlestown Police Department. We yes. have related to those charges. Pat, why don't, you, but why don't you come up and give a little information on that. There was actually a canine track that, that led to Mr. Lowy's apprehension. Hi, I'm uh, Officer Patrick Collins with the Charlestown Police Department over in New Hampshire. On January 4th of this year, we had a, uh, a residential burglary um, that, that occurred on on Willard Street in Charlestown, and I responded to the burglary. It, it was 
it was, it was, the homeowner came home while the burglary was in progress, and we subsequently threw, threw the, uh, a canine track with the, the New Hampshire State Police, Trooper Alex Lee and his canine track to the area of where Cody, Cody Lowy was said to be staying with his girlfriend and his girlfriend's mother over on Erin Court in Charlestown. Um, Cody Lowy was arrested that day and, um, and he's, been, he's been in custody since that day on, on the burglary charges and some other unrelated charges. Susan? Allison T. Oh, I'm sorry. Allison first. Sorry. Two hands at once. I'm with the Commons. Um, are all these guys still uh, incarcerated? No. Uh, the four that were arrested in Vermont were released on conditions uh, conditions of release from Vermont Superior Court. Then, as you've heard, the two, um, I'm sorry, th three subjects are in custody in New Hampshire. Just, then, just one is in custody in New Hampshire. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Goldsmith and Thomas made bail. They are, they are not in custody, but Mr. Mr. Lang, is, yes. Mr. Lang then, is currently in custody. And then Mr. Critchfield is still uh, at large. And the charges? Uh, we can get Susan and then we'll come back. Oh, I was just wondering when the first court hearing is going to be. The, the Vermont uh, arraignments will be on March 13th. Just the charges that the suspects are facing? Uh, so right now they're facing multiple counts of burglary, unlawful mischief, and unlawful trespass. But that will, they, there will be additional charges as these investigations from other agencies are added in. Do these people have a criminal past? Have they been doing this for a while, or is this the first time we've seen law enforcement? That's not something we can discuss at this time. Did you find a cache of like electronics, or did you recover a lot of cash? Did you? Again, that's something part that's this uh, part of the investigation that we can't discuss at this point. All right. So, any more questions for our folks? Are, are the suspects cooperating? Have any of them admitted to the crimes, and have they sort of turned, if you will, on some of the other uh, others in the group? Again, that's not something that we can discuss uh, due to the stage of the investigation. Um, I've had handouts for everybody. I think everybody's on our list, so I will email the press release as well, as, as, along with the graphics that we have. So, uh, thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks a lot Thank you. 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 Lieutenant, sir, sir, we'll take Lieutenant, we're RICK.